Hello friends and welcome to church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson and I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome Church. I'm so happy you've joined us for worship this day as we conclude our series, Unexpected Acts. God's Unexpected Acts post-resurrection in the book of Acts of the Apostles. You see, God's unexpected acts in the world still affected the apostles greatly after Jesus' resurrection and can still affect us today in profound ways, including making us love our neighbor and love God just a little deeper and just a little bit more. Let us now join together in worship and praise.
Hi friends, I'm Sarah Merriweather and I'm one of the staff members working with our family ministry team here at Jerome Church. Today our kids are beginning a new series called Ever After. This month kids are going to look at the story of Ruth to see how God truly writes the best stories for us. Full of companions, 
full of hope and boldness and the knowledge that God is always taking care of us. Each week, kids can join in learning that is designed just for them through our in-person programming and our kids on demand videos. Every Sunday, we gather for in-person kids programming in the Jerome Church building at 9 and 10.30 a.m., where our kids and leaders play games, sing songs, make crafts, and meet new friends as we learn about the Bible together. Kids and families can also tune into a new on-demand kids video every week to hear the Bible story and learn more about the big idea. A new video is available every Sunday to watch on demand. Families can find these new videos on our YouTube channel, in the Jerome Kids Facebook group, and in the Church Center app. Now, let's hear about the ultimate surprise party with today's message from Pastor Bruce. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Our scripture passage for today can be found in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there, was a, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Eliamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonder of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all who have lived in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious days of the Lord, and everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved." This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we come together and celebrate Pentecost, the birthday of the church. A surprise party, if you will, as the disciples were told by Jesus before he ascended to heaven to wait in Jerusalem for the coming of the Spirit. And this was the day the day where we celebrate and remember how God took a bunch of ragtag followers and turned them into the church. You see, God, throughout this series, has shown us surprising and remarkable ways of how uh, he shows up and reverses circumstances that are even stacked, in some cases, against God's own plan. But yet, we are astonished over and over again every time that God shows up, whether it's in our lives or in something we're reading, somebody else's lives. Uh, we're always surprised by God's intervention. It's a, it's a bit like a group of people throwing you a surprise party every year on your birthday since you were a teenager. And over the decades, still acting surprised that on your birthday, the same group of people gather together 
and wish you happy birthday. You turn on the light, they scream surprise, they give you presents and gifts, and always acting shocked. You'd think after so many times you would become an expectation and not a surprise, yet we still take God's intervention with shock in our lives. Throughout scripture, we hear about it. We hear about and remember how Abraham and Sarah gave up after hoping for a child well into their old age until God made them a promise and they had a child in their old age. We forget about how Peter fished all night without a catch until Jesus told him to throw the nets on the other side. And after all night, a full net to bursting and overflowing was caught. We forget about a woman who had been suffering from bleeding for 12 years until she suddenly walked into a crowd feeling alone and invisible. Yet she sees Jesus reaches towards him, touches the hem of his cloak, and is made well. Even more so, we forget that the body of our Savior, the body of the Savior of all creation, was placed into a tomb that was sealed off by a stone until the third day. And he rose, overcoming the penalty of sin, which is death. Over and over and over in scriptures and in the world around us, God shows up and reverses circumstances. We've all can go on the internet or read books uh, and heard stories of healing when the doctor said there is no hope. The cancer is not treatable. And yet, Within a period of time, they go back and the cancer is gone. Uh, we hear stories of a mother and child facing death and an unavoidable car accident, yet then somehow God stepped in and provided a way and everybody survived. We hear about the presence of God in notes received by strangers, our calls from forgotten loved ones, our text with words that saved the life of someone mired with depression and thinking about taking their own life. All of these astonishing acts and events found in the book of Acts and in the church since can be traced back to one surprising moment. And it's that moment of Pentecost where the gift of the Holy Spirit is given. Now, the scripture passage really reads like a surprise story all its own uh, of weird events with uh, tongues of flame hanging over the people's heads and the disciples speaking in non-native tongues to themselves, but people hearing them in their own native tongues, regardless of where they were in the rush of wind the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You see, we often forget that God is still present in the world today through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Every event we have talked about in this series would not have happened without that day of strange events. On Pentecost, we come together to remember how the Holy Spirit took a group of ragtag followers. And now I'm not just talking about the disciples, I'm talking about the ragtag followers who are you and I, that are the believers and made them into a movement for the bringing about of God's kingdom. And God is still present, intervening for the bringing about in God's kingdom through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, through the work of the Spirit changing us, and transforming us, and guiding us, and even convicting us. The Holy Spirit enters our lives and nothing else is the same. We are not left alone. God is working through us and in us, and oftentimes in my case, in spite of me. 
where I can go, no, Lord, I don't want to do that. And God makes it happen anyway. Friends, today is the birthday of the church, the church universal. So why do we still act so surprised? We simply need to lean into the Holy Spirit and expect the unexpected acts of God to change our hearts, our minds, the way we live, the way we act, the way we respond. We need to lean away from our sinful, broken nature as we were supposed to do in our baptism and lean into Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit. Go forth this day remembering and celebrating that you too are going to start expecting the unexpected as us ragtag groups of believers keep on moving forward through the work of the Holy Spirit for the bringing about of God's kingdom. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen.
It's good to be with you again in worship today. My name is Sarah Merriweather, and I'm the Executive Director here at Jerome Church. Today, we're concluding our series all about the unexpected acts of God that happened after the resurrection of Jesus. And today is also the day that we celebrate Pentecost. As we continue in worship together today, I want to invite you to open up your Church Center app if you haven't done so yet, so that you can continue to connect to the tools for ministry and missions at Jerome Church that are available to you online. There are also instructions below on how to download the app and connect with us. While you're in the app, please be sure to check into worship or complete your Connect card today and take some time to explore the opportunities in the app as you find your ways to worship, serve, and grow here at Jerome Church. This past week, we held Vacation Bible School in a nearby park and over 200 kids joined us to learn about Jesus and grow in their faith together. I want to extend a special thank you to all of the volunteers and staff who made this incredible week possible, as well as our community partners from the Jerome Township Fire Department, the Union County Health Department, and the Union County Sheriff, who all taught the kids about safety during each day's safety station. You can visit our Jerome Kids Facebook group to see pictures of the fun that we had this week. As we grow together as followers of Jesus, our hearts are changed, sometimes even by surprise, as we see the tangible opportunities for life change that can happen through our generous giving. I want to invite you today to give out of this spirit as the generous giving of our congregation makes our missions, our ministries, and our outreach events like Vacation Bible School possible. You can give electronically through the link in today's video description on the Jerome Church website or through the Give tab in the Church Center app. And if you've made the decision to give for the first time today, you can connect to our online giving platform by texting the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. You can also give through automatic withdrawal by contacting the church office or by mailing a check to Jerome Church at the address on the screen below. Now, as we close out our time of worship together today, our musicians are going to lead us in our closing song of worship. It's been a wonderful time of worship together, and I want to say thank you for making this Pentecost Sunday a special time of your week, whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or watching later on demand. I want to invite you to connect with us online this week through our social media platforms and in the Church Center app, and we look forward to worshiping with you next week as we begin a brand new series about our intervening God. Have a blessed 
week, friends. I need a